let's go over some OSPF basic concepts one more time. In order for two routers to become adjacent in OSPF and eventually exchange the link state databases, they need to share the same things, such as hello and dead interval timers. They need to be on the same subnet. They need to have the same MTU. They need to be in the same area. And they need to share the same password if authentication is used in case of MD5. Not only do they have to share the password, but also they have to share the same key number. And they need to be in the same area type. So as of this moment, eh, all three areas here in the picture are called normal areas. So if I jump to any router, for example, router 2, if I do show IP OSPF uh, and enter, um, this line here tells me that this router is number of areas in this router is one and one normal area. There are zero stub and zero NSSA. So there are two other types of areas and those type of areas are, are used to filter certain types of LSAs. Cisco also introduced some sub -fl flavors of stub and NSSA. We'll talk about that later but for now different type of areas will be used to filter certain types of LSAs. Normal area allows all LSA types. So LSA type 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 and 5. We talked about those. But stub area is going to filter certain stuff out and we'll do, do that in this particular video. So as of right now, between switch 1 and router 4, we have adjacency. So switch 1, let's say, is learning a bunch of prefixes from its own area, but also from other area, area 5, as well as the external ones. So it assumes that all LSA types we've discussed so far are going to be present in that area. And let's actually verify that in the routing table. So if I jump to this one, OK, so let's just do show IP. I did some changes. So now I have area two, area four has all types of LSAs, has LSA type one, O, or two, has LSA type three, which is inter area, which is OIA here, and has LSA type five, one of them. Actually, I'm going to remove maybe from R2 the summarization of the prefixes. So if I go to show run section OSPF, I'm going to jump to OSPF process one and say no, and I'm going to remove to have more LSA type five prefixes in the routing table. OK, so that should do the trick. So if I go back to switch one, I should see two of those E2 prefixes. And sure, sure enough, I do. Now, what I'm going to do is just to show visually better stuff, I'm going to introduce also external prefixes on R1. Previously, I used the IGRP to introduce that into SPF. This time around, I'm going to introduce uh, the directly connected networks into OSPF via redistribution. So I created already the save time, bunch of loopbacks here. Show IP interface brief, exclude unassigned. So I have those loopbacks 10 through 14, and each one of them starts with 10, 1, 0, something, and they have different uh, length of um, network mask. So what I'm going to do to introduce them into OSPF, I'm going to say, uh, IP access list standard, and I'll call it connected network or subnets, maybe ACL. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to match on all those addresses. And so what do, what do they have in common, all of these? Well, 10.1.0 is definitely the common denominator here. So I'm going to say permits 10.1.0. Zero, and I'm going to match on the first three bytes because they never change. So zero, that's going to be 10, matching on all tens, all ones, and all zeros. And I'm going to ignore the last byte. So that access control is to show IP access list is going to be matching on anything that is 10.1.0 slash 24, as shown here with the wildcard bits 000255. Now I'm going to use something called route map. I've never used that before, but I'll introduce that in more detail when I talk about BGP protocol, but 
For now, it's just a route map command followed by the name. I'll call it connected to OSPF, so underscore to OSPF, and I'll do permit 10. If I didn't say permit 10, it would be permit 10. That's a default. There's also permit and deny statement, so it kind of acts like an access control list, but it's more of a if something is true, I'm going to do something to it kind of behavior here in the route map. So permit 10 say I'm going to match on so match on IP address in access control list and I'm going to copy that and paste. So what it does it doesn't do anything just yet but it says if if the prefixes will be actually covered by this access control list I'm going to permit to do something but what is it? Well I'm going to jump to our router OSPF now and that's what I'm going to be doing with this route map. I'm going to say redistribute connected networks because it's not there's not EIGRP or RIP or or IS2IS IS in this particular situation. It's connected networks, and make sure the subnets are included. Do not do summarization to the class boundary. And I'm going to use a route map called connected to OSPF, which matches on that access control list here, right? So I'm going to say connected to OSPF, copy paste, and that did, did the trick. So now show IP OSPF database, R1 is introducing a bunch of uh, um, LSA type 5, which are 1010 something right there. As a result of that, switch one is now receiving them. Let's see that happen, switch one. So now we should have more external types uh, too. And here we are. So there's now much more prefixes. So the reason I'm doing this is just to visually show the, the difference between a normal area and area stub. So what I'm going to do now, let's just say for the argument's sake that this network does not need all those external prefixes, but it needs the reachability to those networks. So how do we do that? We can do this obviously by summarization, which we've done. But if there's an easier way of doing that, if this is the area four here in, in the picture that doesn't need them, I can make this area stub. So what it does is the ABR connecting to a stub area, it'll, it'll filter out all external prefixes instead obviously they need still to be able to get there so instead it is going to introduce a default route so I'll say if you don't all the inter and intra area prefixes are available for anything else use the gateway of last resort which is the address all zeros with a mask or zero so if I do that I need to do this on both routers our router 4 and route and switch one because they need to agree on the area ID which they are agreeing right now but they also need to agree on area type so if I go here now this is a disruptive uh, change so in the production system it will be requiring some maintenance window OSPF one I'll say area four is going to be stub and I'll need to do the same thing on the ABR which has a link show IP OSPF interface brief has links in area four right there so what i'm going to do is uh, router ospf area four stub so i did it quickly enough so i don't lose my neighbor oh no it's a forced reset so that might change actually cause that now so more to the point so when the area is stub now show ip ospf if i do this command it says the number of areas in this router is two one is normal, which is my area zero, and one is stub. And the same is it on switch one. But what really happened is that R4 now stopped advertising LSA type 5 into this area. Instead, injected the default route so they can still reach some external prefixes. So if they don't know where the, those are, they're going to be sending this to their R4 the gateway, and R4 knows where those are, because R4 did not change its routing table. It still sees in the backbone area, show IP route OSPF, all these external prefixes. It only stopped sending them towards switch one. So if I go back to switch one, and previously we saw all these external prefixes here present, 
Now if I do that, same command, show IP route OSPF. Now all these external prefixes E type 2 are gone. Instead, we have LSA type 3 default route introduced by our uh, router here. So now, because we have adjacency in VLAN 2, in VLAN 2 we are receiving a default route, which is the gateway of last resort. So if I took any of those IP addresses from R1, right, if I go here and again, so can I ping this address, 10.1.0.1? Um, let's go back to switch one. Yes, I can. So if I do trace to that, oh, I need to disable domain lookup because it's going nuts. No IP domain lookup. It would take forever to do that. There we go. Five. I can reach five as well. So this area type, area stub, is filtering LSA type 5 and instead uh, the area border router is introducing into the area default route as LSA type 3.